if we need to find the induced EMF, we can use Faraday's law of induction. Faraday's law of induction says that the induced EMF equals to negative n times delta phi b over delta t. Most of the time, we can ignore the negative sign. We can just use this to find the amount of induced EMF. The n is number of loops, and the phi b usually is just b times a. And uh, for usually in a problem, we'll either have a magnetic field as a constant and the area changes, or the area is a constant and the magnetic field changes. If b is a constant, we can take the b out of the delta, so this will be n times b times the rate at which the area changes. If the area is a constant, we, take, we can take the area out of the delta, so this will be n times a times the rate at which the magnetic field changes. For example, a problem may say that the magnetic field decreases at the rate of 0.2 teslas per second. That means delta B over delta T is 0.2 teslas per second. And if we want to find the induced current in a wire loop, we just have to divide the induced EMF by the resistance in ohms of the wire loop. We have learned these two scenarios when the area with magnetic flux changes. In this one, a wire loop is being pulled out of a uniform magnetic field at a speed v. In that one, a conducting rod riding on a conducting rail is being pulled to the right at a speed v. Using Faraday's law of induction, we derive the induced EMF equals to the BLV. And if this wire loop has n turns, then we will need to multiply this BLV by n to find the induced EMF.